Thank you very much. Uh, here we are again, another year on, and um, uh, some things have changed, some things haven't. But uh, what I want to do, uh, and, and I'm going to zip through the slides quite quickly because actually some of you may have seen them before. This is really just to set the scene in terms of what's going on in England anyway, which is an interesting country because it's one of the countries that uh, has... Uh, that, that treats uh, electronic cigarettes primarily as a, a consumer product. Uh, so I just want to give you some data from the Smoking Toolkit study, which most or all of you will be aware of, um, and then I want to allow five minutes for questions and uh, interrogation. So here we go. Hold on to your hats. This is my declaration of competing interests. Um, I do do uh, research and uh, consultancy for um, uh, manufacturers of uh, licensed products, such as Pfizer, GSK, and Johnson Johnson. I'm a trustee of the uh, charity Quit, um, uh, and obviously I work very closely with the National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training and Cancer Research UK fund me and most of my research group. So the aim of the smoking, one of the aims of the Smoking Toolkit study, it started before the electronic cigarette uh, uh, boom took place, uh, is to track uh, the key performance indicators on smoking and smoking cessation in England act as a policy tool, but also to help us to understand why and how people are stopping and what we can do to improve uh, stop smoking and what we can do to improve that. I'm just going to show you data on electronic cigarettes, but I'm also going to put it into the context of uh, what's happening more generally in terms of quit smoking rates and smoking prevalence in, uh, in England. Uh, it's monthly household surveys. Each one is uh, uh, approximately 1,800 uh, respondents, of whom about 450 are smokers or recent ex-smokers. Um, and we've been collecting data on electronic cigarettes since the second quarter of 2011, uh, at which, which is the point at which they really started to take off uh, in this country. If you want more information on the methods, the paper there by Jenny Fiddler is open access. You can just download it. Also, uh, you can go onto smokinginengland.info website where we, up, we publish updates of all of these things and other things as well uh, every month. So, uh, I'm going to start with the prevalence of the use of electronic uh, cigarettes and other nicotine products um, in various categories. This is among smokers, and many of you will be familiar with this sort of pattern, which is a fairly steady decline in the use of licensed nicotine products, NRT, um, a, a rapid growth up until about the third quarter of 2013, and then a slow uh, growth uh, with a few... Uh, blips um, from then on. But what you can see is with the red line at the top there that the overall use of nicotine among smokers has grown so that about one in three of the smokers that you see around you are, us are also using another nicotine product of one sort or another and it's mostly an electronic cigarette. Uh, not always daily, in fact quite a lot of them are not daily, They'll just, they just use them occasionally. Uh, what about recent ex-smokers? These are people who've stopped smoking and, uh, 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 within the last year. And again, you can see a pretty steady rise, uh, and uh, the green line is the electronic cigarettes. Um, this is accompanied by a slightly slower decline in the use of uh, uh, licensed nicotine products, mainly uh, bought over the counter. Um, it, we've been looking at whether these, whether these trends show signs that they're, they're related to each other, um, and I think we, our paper's just recently been published, uh, where we, we actually, uh, certainly among smokers, found that the trends were somewhat different, and the decline in the use of licensed nicotine products actually started before the growth in electronic cigarettes, so it's possible that something else is going on there. But um, what you can see is that electronic cigarettes have grown the use of nicotine products among recent ex-smokers. Um, if you put those two together, this is by far the largest bulk, uh, the group of uh, uh, e-cigarette users. What you can see is that uh, any, any e-cigarette use grew, as I say, till the third quarter of 2013, and has, has carried on growing slowly since then. Um, but around, only around two-thirds of those are daily users. And um, uh, it's quite interesting, because if you think about cigarettes, of course, the vast majority of smokers are daily users. Um, 
What about uh, a group that uh, people are concerned about, which is uh, the never smokers? Is there any evidence that we're expanding the market for nicotine among people who actually haven't smoked yet? You can see right at the bottom there is the, is the trajectory uh, uh, since 2013 when we've been monitoring it. And you can see that it's, it's really, really low. And interestingly, very similar to licensed nicotine products. Um, I'm still not quite sure why someone would use a licensed nicotine product if they've never smoked, um, but uh, it's around 0.2 of a percent. Um, actually, uh, um, uh, and this is anecdotal, so you could take it for what it's worth, um, on questioning some people who reported being a never smoker and using a licensed nicotine product, uh, it turned out that uh, they actually were a smoker, so, or had been a smoker. So one of the things to bear in mind about all these kinds of data is they're subject to a margin of error um, and, and, and reporting error, so people don't always necessarily understand the questions properly. But if you look at the use of uh, electronic cigarettes by what we would call long-term ex-smokers, these are people who've stopped for at least a year, and compare that with the licensed nicotine products, you can see that with the licensed nicotine products, which is it's, uh, the... Uh, brown line there, it stayed around, it stayed quite flat. Uh, with the use of electronic cigarettes, it's grown from about 2% to over 5%. It's still very low, uh, but there is clear evidence of a, of a growth in that, uh, in that group. Um, we were interested, and I think one of the reasons why, I know one of the reasons why Public Health England uh, uh, published the report uh, trying to sort of summarise the evidence uh, as far as we know it on, on electronic cigarettes was a, was a, cons was a, uh, a concern that um, people might be getting from the media reports um, uh, 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 sort of misinformation about the, uh, the safety or otherwise of uh, electronic cigarettes. So we started collecting from November to 2014 beliefs about whether electronic cigarettes were uh, less, harm less harmful at all, not much less harmful, just less harmful than, than cigarettes. And what you can see, the total is the brown line in the, in the middle there, and you can see that it's just under 50% in our survey. Other people, uh, Ash have done surveys uh, and found uh, broadly similar figures. But uh, what you can see is that quite a lot of people um, actually believe that uh, or are not sure whether um, uh, e-cigarettes are, are less harmful at all than cigarettes. If you look at the age profile, um, it's pretty consistent across the age range, and that makes it somewhat different from NRT users, where it's, it's primarily pe it's, it's more people in their um, uh, middle age uh, and, and over that... Uh, well, I say middle age, sort of 19, uh, sorry, uh, 30s and 40s, um, uh, who use licensed nicotine products. So relative to NRT users, there's, there's um, more younger people are likely to use e-cigarettes, down to 16. Um, you can't tell from this graph um, particularly, but there is actually it's statistically significantly more women than men using e-cigarettes, and the same is true for licensed nicotine products. In terms of the social gradient, um, we find with licensed nicotine products that uh, it's pretty flat across the social gradient, even people who are having to pay for it, um, whereas uh, with e-cigarettes, it tends to be people from more affluent... Uh, it's not a massive difference, but uh, there's a slight tendency for people from more affluent backgrounds to be using e-cigarettes. This, this appears to be changing, um, and uh, it may be a diffusion of innovation effect. But uh, I think it's interesting when you consider that actually our, you know, we're, we're most concerned in harm reduction about those people who are from more disadvantaged groups. And at the moment, uh, e-cigarettes are being used by people from more um, affluent backgrounds, a little bit. Um, I'm particularly concerned, obviously, with smoking cessation, and so I'm just going to finish with that. The, um, you, what, what you can see here is the huge growth in the use of e-cigarettes to help, people, help you stop smoking. Uh, that's the green line, and that has continued to rise, albeit more slowly. There has been a decline um, in the use of licensed nicotine products bought over the counter, um, and some decline, in, uh, although from quite low levels, in the use of other methods. Uh, this is actually quite a complicated graph, uh, which I can come back to uh, and discuss it during the coffee break with anyone, but some of you have seen it already. Uh, and that is, these are 95% confidence intervals for our 
uh, for our estimate of effect sizes uh, from the smoking toolkit study. But the key thing I want to point out there is that, and we, we update this all the time, is that if you look at the, uh, uh, what we would think of as the real world effectiveness of e-cigarettes in, in the English population, then um, it's broadly similar to the licensed nicotine products uh, bought, uh, obtained on prescription, but quite a bit higher than um, nicotine replacement therapy bought over the counter, which I'm sorry to say still is not showing any benefit relative to using, using no aid. Uh, if we look at the use of e-cigarettes after quitting, the CMO uh, was interested in whether people were taking up e-cigarettes having already quit, and you can see that although the rate is growing, it's, it's actually uh, low. Um, people are interested in the take-up of smoking. Are we driving uh, more people somehow into smoking? Uh, the line has been pretty flat since 2011, since we've been looking at it. And then finally, just looking at the big picture, this, the, the line shows the prevalence and 95% confidence intervals around this. And what you've seen is since... Uh, since we started looking at it in 2007, a pretty steady decline of around 0.7 of a percentage point a year. And this year, in the last two quarters, uh, it's actually gone up. Uh, so um, I, don't, I, I don't know why. Uh, it could be a blip. It might not be. Uh, but we need to look at that. If you look at attempts to stop smoking, since these cigarettes came on the market, there was then an increase in attempts to stop smoking. And now there's a decrease. I, I, they could be related, they could be completely unrelated. The trajectories are very different, so um, it could be related to something completely different. Uh, there's lots of hypotheses. But if you look at the success rates of stopping among those who try, you can see that since 2011, the overall success rates have actually been somewhat higher than they were previously. So it's a complex picture, I guess, is what I'm trying to get across. Um, and we must be, what we need to do is to, is to analyse it and be very cautious in our interpretations. So e-cigarettes are being used primarily by smokers wanting to stop or reduce their smoking. Use of e-cigarettes is slightly more prevalent in younger adults and people with higher social grade compared with NRT. Um, only a minority of people believe e-cigarettes are less harmful than smoking. Um, uh, they're, they're the most popular aid to cessation at the moment, and they do appear to be broadly as effective as uh, licensed nicotine products or licensed medicines. Um, uh, but, of course, we need a lot more data on that. There's, there's, uh, you're going to hear more about that. There's, um, there's no clear association uh, uh, that we can find between the growth in e-cigarette uses and changes in smoking rates or smoking problems. That's it. Have I left time for a question? <laughs> like, what was I talking about? <laughs> Clive Bates, ex-director of Ash. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I mean, the people that think that uh, e-cigarettes are less harmful, it's not really a very interesting finding, is it? Is it possible to add a question that says, you know, much less harmful or a lot less harmful or, you know, something like that, that would give some, um, you know, give some uh, granularity to that un insight amongst the people who do think it's less harmful? Yeah, no, it's a really, really good point. Um, uh, the ITC survey uh, does ask that, but we don't have the data to present not today. Not top of head. Not at top of. We do have it from you guys. But do have it from we do have it from you guys. So so the answer is there, um, uh, and we can refine that question in the toolkit study. Yeah. Okay, another question. Can't see any hands up. Also clear. Yeah. Okay. Again, just to remind people, please name and. Uh, Ricardo Colazzo, University of Ricardo, can you? We're audio. Uh, Ricardo Poloso, University of Catania. Uh, Robert, obviously a nice presentation. I just uh, picked up a, a couple of uh, interesting uh, take-home messages. The, the gray line at the beginning when you describe uh, the um, perception of uh, e-cigarette users, it's, it's very schizophrenic. Um, I think uh, this has to do with the media uh, having an influence on these particularly sensitive people because my understanding is vapors are particularly sensitive to their health issues. What do you think? Uh, you may be right, but uh, it, it's also quite a small sample. Uh, I, it may be, it, I, I should, I, I uh, very often in other, so, uh, other talks I'll put confidence intervals around the estimates, but the, those, those slides were rather, as you can see, those were rather busy, so uh, I wasn't able to put confidence intervals around them. But they are, they're quite wide. So I, I think, I think um, you may be right, 
but also um, from, from our data anyway, um, I'd have to look at it more closely to see whether there was statistically significant uh, differences across the months.